something. It was not empty, however. The entire room was filled with lines of upon lines of beds. They were simple things, little more than a pipe and thin mattresses. Is this a hospital? He had at least been able to put a name to the harsh scent that pervaded the room. The room swarmed with the harsh, biting smell of antiseptic. In the center of the room were, sh were shelves stacked with medicine and a number of medical devices, the function of which Junpei didn't know. I don't think it has a connotation in the game. Door 7! It was mainly known for being related to a cult. <clears throat> More importantly, however, on the back wall of the room were four doors. Three of them embolized with large single-digit numbers made with thick red paint. The door on the left was labeled 3. The second door from the left had no number, but the third had, be, had been given a 7. And the rightmost door had an 8. There could be no doubt they were numbered doors. It did strike Junpei as strange, however, that the door between 3 and 7 should be blank. What he wondered could it mean. Let's take a look at the doors. Yes, that sounds like a good plan. Junpei headed toward the doors, weaving his way between the beds. He stared with door he stared with door three. He started with door three. On the left, and moved to the right until he reached door eight. <clears throat> It's no use. Well, of course. If it was that easy open, to open these doors, what would be the point of the nonary game? We have to, we have to activate the red, or the numbered doors. Won't. Well, wait a minute. What's wrong? Look, the display on the red. There's nothing on it. Huh? Don't you remember the red at the central staircase? If no one was inside, it should say it said vacant. Oh yeah, you're right. But this one... There's nothing on it. Right. I wonder if it's broken. Only one way to find out. It didn't respond. All four took turns placing their hands over the red, but it refused to respond. They pulled at the lever, and still it did nothing. As they soon discovered, it wasn't only the red for, for door 8 that was behaving strangely. The red on door 7 also refused to respond, and door 3 was similar, similarly silent. None of them would respond. What did it mean? I knew it. They're broken. Zero, sh zero sure sucks at maintenance. No, that's impossible. You really think zero would prepare all of this? Would make such a stupid, simple mistake? Maybe, but that doesn't explain why this thing ain't working. It was at that moment that they heard a voice from behind them. Snake! Snake! My boy! I believe the bottom of the device has begun... has been removed. They spun around to see... Snake! I missed you, my friend! But it was more than just Snake. 
Ace, Clover, and Seven quickly filled into the room as well. Although they were glad to see one another, it wasn't terribly surprising that they had. If it had been the other party who had opened the gate in front of the kitchen, it wasn't unreasonable that they'd bumped into one another eventually. The rest of Snake's team, however, did look rather surprised. Uh, how? How'd you guys... How did you end up here? After a moment of silence and surprise, everyone suddenly began to talk, desperate to exchange information. They talked about the rooms they'd been through and how they'd ended up in the same place. Of course, none of it was very useful information, but, they hardly, but that hardly mattered. They were happy to simply see one another again. Although the level of cheer varied gr greatly from person to person, each one of them were wearing some manner of smile. Almost as though they had already forgotten about the death of the ninth man. No, thought Junpei, perhaps that wasn't it. Perhaps thoughts of his death were what drove them to smile at one another. Not in a morbid or hateful way, no. The ninth man had died. But they were still alive, and that was something to be happy about. A sort of simple, uncom uncomplicated joy, Junpei thought. The joy of being alive. Still alive. He felt sorry for the ninth man. More than anything, Junpei was just happy to be alive. And there you have it. Our half, of the, our half of the story. His part finished, Ace fell silent. For a moment, Junpei was silent in thought. Then he spoke. Okay, let me see if I've got all this straight. When you guys got here, the bases for the Reds were already gone. And you looked all over the room, but you couldn't find anything? So you figured... That there might be something in the hallway on... With all the doors. So you went and had a look. Yeah. And while you were looking around, you heard voices? Uh-huh. So you followed the voices... So you followed the voices and came back here. Indeed. And that was how we found you. Junpei ex examined the three reds again, just in case. On the bottom of each was a long, thin gap. It looked like a slit for something. Probably something electronic. Well, this isn't good. If the red is inactive, we can't keep going. Well, what about the hallway over there? Isn't there anywhere else we can go? No, there isn't. There are plenty of more there are plenty more hospital rooms, but nothing else. Hospital rooms? That's what's behind all those doors? Yes. There are a number of individual rooms in addition to this large one. There was a door at the end of the hallway, but it was locked. There was an astro astro bleh, astrological symbol engraved near the keyhole, however. I was able to get a good uh, feel of it. Believe it was the symbol of Jupiter. Not again. Those goddamn things are everywhere. I wonder what they all mean. For a moment, everyone was silent, deep in thought. While we're asking what things mean, what's the deal with this room? I mean, I thought this was a cruise ship, but I can't imagine a cruise ship would have a hospital like this. Of all the people, it was Seven who answered, and with calm confidence. Well, I figured it was probably a hospital ship. Chances are... It's the gigantic. The gigantic? Junpei looked confused. So did everyone else. What is this gigantic? 
Seven knit his brow for a moment, then began to explain. The gigantic. He explained that she had been a sister ship to the Titanic, built in the early 20th century. The Titanic had two sister ships who were identical to one another in nearly every aspect. The Gigantic was said to be one of them. She was initially she was initially intended to be a passenger liner, like the like the Titanic. But soon after the ship was launched, the First World War began, and she was pres she was pressed into duty by the British Navy as a hospital ship. Hospital ship? What? Sometime later, the Gigantic was damaged by a German mine in the Aegean Sea. She managed to run around after the incident, and consequently was not sunk. What then happened to the Gigantic after her fateful encounter in the Aegean Sea? One theory ran that a man named Lord Gordian purchased her. Lord Gordon, it seemed, had been one of the few survivors of the Titanic tragedy, and the trauma had turned him into a an obsessed collector of all things related to the Titanic. And his obsession deepened. He began to despise. He began to dis disser the Titanic itself. He, desire. Oh my goodness, disser desire. I'm I, can you guys tell I'm still sleepy? <clears throat> that, of course, was impossible. The Titanic lay at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. The Gigantic, however, had not suffered such a dire fate, and as she was and as she was identical to her ship, her sister ship, she caught Lord Gordon's eye. So you're saying this Lord Gordon bought this ship? Yeah. At least I think I am. That's impossible. No way we're in the same boat that's almost a hundred years old. Pipe down, just pay attention. What that is, that's it. Well, I have you got well have you got any proof? Proof? Proof that this ship is really the gigantic. Well, uh this ship's got a got stuff that's like the Titanic in a hospital ship. So I just figured... Oh, for goodness. Don't tell me that that's your only reason. No, no, I've got more. Like? Well, uh, I mean... Seven looked around, desperately doing anything to avoid meeting Lotus's piercing stare. He scratched his head for a moment, then gave up. Finally, he opened his mouth. I don't know. Lotus sighed and shook her head. I guess your memory isn't back yet, is it? Yeah, sorry about that. Hey, 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 hey. Wait a minute. Memory isn't back. Junpei... Junpei was. He felt legitimately shocked by what seemed to be new and very important information. Everyone else, however, seemed unimpressed. In fact, they all looked at Junpei as, as though he had something very said something very strange. He decided to revise his attitude for the next question. Wait, was I the only one that didn't know? Everyone nodded. Why? Oh yeah, I guess I didn't tell you, huh? I told the rest of them before we ran into the stair, ran into you on the stairs. I told them I couldn't remember a damn thing from before I woke up. What? Then almost as if to save Junpei from further embarrassment. Drink coffee? Ugh, I hate coffee. A bell began to ring from far away. It sounded as though it was the clock at the main stairway. Junpei couldn't. Junpei counted each chime carefully. Ten, eleven, twelve. 
It's midnight. And we've still got six hours left right. Left right. We don't have any time to screw around. Let's get going. We gotta find the missing parts for the Reds. What do you mean, find? How on earth do you propose we do that? We've looked everywhere in this room. That only leaves one place to look. One? Well, I guess it's not really right. W wait. Don't tell me you mean we need to search all of these, all of the other rooms. Don't freak out. We already searched four of them. Four rooms? We just have to split up the rest between the eight of us. If each person does six rooms, that'll be 48 rooms, right? So there are 48 left? Holy crap. Why ever have them flavorful candy like coffees? So good. There's also the white coffee that ex that exists that takes the taste kind of like almond milk. Well, see, the thing is, I don't like almonds either. <laughs> her earlier, her earlier express experiences had apparently not encouraged Lotus to trust Seven. Seven scratched his head awkwardly. I don't know. After a little more discussion, they split up and headed toward the rooms to begin searching them. Junpei was chosen to, sur to search the rooms on the star starboard side, moving from fore to aft. They also determined that when they would return to report their findings the next time the clock sounded the time. When it did, they would meet back in the large central room full of beds. If during the search, any of them were to locate any missing components, they were to yell for the others. If this strategy failed, they'd return to discuss their options later. The details decided, the details decided they left to begin searching. Out into the hallway they went, each to the rooms they'd been assigned. However, from far away, Junpei heard the bell ring. It did so only once. It was 1 a.m. He jogged through the entrance of the large hospital room to find six of the others already there. Ace, Santa, Clover, June, Seven, and Lotus. Wait, so Snake's missing? Wait. Who else is missing? Snake. No, just Snake. Snake's missing. Where's Snake? Put that shit down on caffeine. Eh, I'm just not a big fan of coffee, sadly. Like, you can add stuff to it and everything. It's just, it still tastes like coffee. And if you're going to add so much stuff that it doesn't taste like coffee, why drink coffee? So I don't. <laughs> They had gathered in front of door number eight, or perhaps, to be accurate, they had gathered in front of the red next to the door number eight. Had one of them found the missing piece? What happened, guys? It was June who answered him. Jumpy, look! She was pointing at the red. He pushed through the others until he stood in front of it. Immediately, he knew what she had meant. The display on the front of the red read vacant. Junpei sighed. Come on guys, who was it? I thought we were supposed to yell if we found it. Well, Junpei wondered why she was hesitant. The others looked as confused as Jun, but kept their mouths shut. What the hell? What's up with you guys? They all knew something he didn't, and Junpei wasn't about to leave things that way. No! 
Don't tell me something happened to Snake. Finally, Lotus frowned and spoke. Well, that's the thing. We don't know. You don't know? When I got back, it was already like this. There was no one else. That means I was the first one back, but... The missing part... The missing parts were already back in the red. Junpei looked at the bottom of the red again, just to make sure. The slot... The slot that had been open at the bottom was now covered with metal. Clearly, whatever had been missing had been returned. What about the other two? They're the same. Junpei quickly examined the other two boxes. Satisfied that they were all that they were also repaired, but still very confused, he returned to the others. All right, I just want to be sure here. Nobody has any idea what the hell happened here, right? Ace and June nodded silently. Seven raised his hands as if to say, "Not me," and Santa just shrugged. Only Clover lowered her head and did nothing. Huh? Wait a minute. That was when he noticed. Where's Snake? Hmm. Junpei swept his eyes across the room a second time, but Snake was nowhere to be seen. Does that mean he found them? I have no idea. There's nothing to suggest it, but nothing to suggest he didn't either. I suppose we'll, we'll know we'll know until we can ask him I suppose I don't suppose that's what I I missed that word I don't suppose we'll know until we can ask him in person well whatever he did he didn't do it or didn't do he's pretty damn lame what the hell is he up to maybe he's lost yeah well that seems likely dude can't see I don't know how he gets around in the first place. Clover raised her head. No, that's impossible. Suddenly she was shouting. Yeah, my brother's blind, but he's got a really great hearing. He can get around as well as anyone who can see. So he, he couldn't get lost. That's impossible. Oh snap, so she don't know what happened to him either. Clover had started to shake, and the knuckles of her hand had gone white. She spun around, but before she did, Junpei noticed her tears welling up in her eyes. I'm gonna go look for him! The words were barely out of her mouth when she began to run. Hey! Hold on, Clover! Wait! Junpei cried out to her, but he was too slow. She kept going, and before anyone else could react, she was gone. Damn it! What should we do now? Well, the red is working now. No, we're not leaving two people behind. We should go look for them. Oh, man, this ain't good. Oh, yes, what an excellent idea. We just wasted a, a bunch of time looking for some piece of electronic junk. Now let's waste some more time by looking for a couple of idiots. Pretty much. Pretty much. Door 7. <laughs> then, re then remain here if you feel you must, but there's no time. We've only five hours left. Junpei and the others nodded to the one another and took off at a run. In front of the stairs that led to B-Deck, they decided to split up. They quickly assigned search areas and went their separate ways. Soon only two of them were left. Those two were Junpei and Jun, who had been a few steps behind the others. Alright, we should go too. Yes. Oh, wait. Yes, let's go. But where should we start? Let's see. Where should we start? The casino, the first class cabin, the hallway with all the rooms, back to the large hospital room. 
Probably not the last one. So one of the one of the top three. Do the last one, hospital. Why would I want to? No, we're, I, we're not gonna go back to that one because everyone else is standing in there. So there's no point in going back to that one. So we, we've got places to look. We've got the casino, the first class cabin, and the hallway with all the rooms. But if we go back to the large place with, do the last one, yes. Why, why though? Why would we want to go back to the Come on! So now what do we do? Do we talk to him or walk away without saying anything? Walk away? So we came back to the room for nothing? They talk too much. <laughs> okay, so now the casino, first class cabin, or the hallway with all the rooms. No, no. Why don't we go check out the first class cabin? All right, let's go. Outside of the first class cabin, they found Clover. She was standing in front of the hall, in front of the wall. She was staring at a meaningless point on the wall, her eyes blank. What should Junpei do? Are you all right? He did his best to sound friendly, but Clover didn't respond. Look, I, I know you're really worried, but um, he could think of no words to say that didn't sound hollow and fake. Junpei hesitated. Clover was so consumed by worry and fear that Junpei feared it would crush her. Her actions did surprise him. Her actions didn't surprise him. She had suddenly lost her brother, who she seemed to have been very close to. Long. Her voice was thin and barely audible. Long. Alone. I said, leave me alone. Suddenly she was screaming. You're so annoying. Just go away. Leave me alone. Just looking at you guys is pissing me off. Go away, okay? Just go somewhere else. Stop bothering me. Junpei was taken aback. Such anger and hate. Jun's eyes had gone wide with surprise as well. Why are you still here? Didn't you hear me? Fine, forget it. If you aren't gonna leave, then I'll just... Alright. Let's go, June. Y yeah They turned and left Clover. As they did, Junpei glanced back over his, uh, over his shoulder to see Clover wiping tears from her face. 
Clover had driven had driven home the misery of their situation. But Junpei told himself that getting depressed would get him nowhere but depressed. For Clover's sake, they had to find Snake and fast. He did his best to push away the misery and depression and forced him a smile. So where do you think we should go next? Jeez. <laughs> How about the casino? Let's go take a look. Before they knew it, they were there. So was Lotus. She was leaning against the wall, examining her nails. 